Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Josh Just Coding. In today's video, we are going to be carrying on with our wave-based survival. Today, we are going to be setting up the logic to get our player to be able to shoot, and we're also going to create a basic crosshair so that we know where we are aiming. So let's jump straight into it. In the previous video, we set up this games folder, and we have our blueprints, input, and maps folder inside of it. So the first thing we need to do is create an input for shooting. So we can open our input folder, we can come into actions, we can right click, and we'll go over to input and create an input action. We'll call this IA underscore, IA standing for input action, and we'll call it shoot. Now if we open this, we can just save it. Uh, we don't actually have to change anything in here. Now what we can do is we can come back to the input folder and open IMC underscore default. And here where the mapping dropdown is, you'll see this add action mapping button. You can click that. And then you'll get a none entry. We can set this to IA shoot, which is our new input. If we open the dropdown, we can now select the input that we want bound to the shoot. So you can either search for it in here, or if you click on this little keyboard symbol over here, you can now press the button you want to set. So I'll press the left mouse button, and you can see it now binds to the left mouse button. So we can actually just go ahead and save this. We don't need to do anything else in here. Now we want to come over to our player blueprint. And inside of here, just like how we have inputs for our other three, our jump, our move, and our look, we're going to actually need to set up some code for our shoot. So what we'll do is search for IA underscore shoot. Now there's going to be two. You'll see an enhanced action event and an enhanced action values. You want to select the event. You can tell the difference between because the event has an arrow where the value has this little block. So. We now have our event. We will want to click the little drop down. So just for knowledge, triggered is gets called basically every tick while you're holding down your button. So if you're holding down the left mouse button, this will get called every tick. Started is the first one. Ongoing gets called while it's being held, canceled, and completed. Obviously, it's when you cancel it or when you release it. So for us, today we're just going to create a simple one-shot, like a pistol, semi-automatic gun. In the future, we'll expand this logic. But for now, we want to shoot one bullet when we press the left mouse button. So we can drag off of started to accomplish that. And we'll search for a line trace by channel. Now, we actually need to set up this line trace. So we need a start location for it. So this is where the trace will start from. And we want it to come from the center of the player's screen. So we'll grab the follow camera. We will get world location. And we can hook this into start. Now we need an end location. So what we can do is get the follow camera. We can get forward vector. And we can just go ahead and multiply this. And we can right click on this output node. So just right click it and we can convert it to a float. Now what we can do is we can create a variable and we'll call it shoot distance. And we'll make this a float. Now if we compile, you will get a default value, which I've set to 5,000. And this is going to be how far the trace will actually go. So how far a player can shoot an enemy from. And we'll hook this up to the multiply. So basically the end location is going to be 5,000 units in front of the player. And remember an unreal unit is one centimeter. So 5,000 centimeters in front of the player. Then what we can do from our get world location is we can just say add. We'll add the multiply to the bottom of this node. 
and we'll add this to the end. Now what we can do is set draw debug to for duration just so that we can see this working. So if we compile and save and we actually run the project now, you can see when we shoot, a line trace is coming out of the center of our camera. But it's incredibly hard to know where I'm aiming right now because we don't have a crosshair. So what we can do to actually create a crosshair is in our player folder, we'll create a new folder and we'll call it player UI. Now we can right click inside of this folder, come to user interface, come to widget blueprints, select user widgets, and we can search WBP underscore player crosshair. Now if we open this up, it is going to bring us to the designer tab, and this is where we actually create our widget and what it looks like. So up here, we're going to want to search for a canvas panel, and we'll just drag it in. Now by default, our UI is going to be set to screen size and to fill the screen. And this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. It will always fill the entirety of the player's screen. Then we'll want to get a image. We can drag this image anywhere into our canvas panel for now. Because what we're going to do, if you select this image, first we'll rename it to crosshair image. And then in the details panel, we have this anchors. We'll want to select the anchor and we'll just select this one right in the middle of the screen. Then right below that, we have position X and position Y. We'll just want to reset this to zero and zero. Then you'll notice it's actually not centered because it's anchored to the top left, but we want the center of the crosshair to be dead center in the screen. So to fix that, we can come back to our details panel to alignment. And in both of these, we can set it to 0.5. Now, this isn't a very good crosshair. It's just a white block. So what we'll want to do is under appearance, there is a brush drop down. You can open the drop down and we'll get this image. Now, I don't have an image for this specifically right now. And that's fine because there's actually a decent looking cross here right here provided to us by the engine just called anchor. So we can select that. Now it's a bit stretched out, so I'm just going to adjust the scale of it a bit to make it look better. And then we can just set the position, which got changed back to zero, just like so. Now, of course, you can make your crosshair look however you want. As long as it is centered in the screen, it will be functional. So we can compile and save this. Now, if we come back to our character blueprint, up in begin play, which we have this column for add input mapping, right after we add our input mapping, we want to create widget. For the class, we will select our widget that we just created. So WBP underscore player crosshair. And the owning player will be the player controller. So to do that, we can just search get player controller. Then from this return value, we will call add to viewport. So here we're creating the widget and here we're actually displaying it on the screen. So now if we compile and save this and we come back to our project, we now have a crosshair in the center of our screen and exactly where the crosshair is aiming is where the trace will go. So we aim at that block, we hit the block. We aim at this block, we hit the block. Now, the position of the crosshair is a bit awkward since, well, it's basically right in our butt. And, you know, we don't want to be aiming from our butt. So let's adjust the location of this. And to do that, we're actually going to adjust the location of the camera and the mesh of our character. Because we don't want to be shooting from the left of our screen or to the right of our screen. We want to be shooting from the center of our screen and have the player a bit to the left or right. So first off, I'm not a huge fan of 
the height we had our camera at. So I'm just going to move it to head level, like so. And I'm just going to test this out to get a new look. And this part is completely up to you, right? You can change this camera to be however you want. So I'm going to set it to 58 on the, or to 50 on the Z. And now it's right about shoulder level. And again, you can make this higher or lower, however you would like. And you can see it's already easier to aim now that it's coming out of our head. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab the mesh just a little here. And we will want to offset it just that tiny bit. This capsule component is the root component, so we can't change it. Don't worry about that. And now when we play, our character is just a bit to the left. And we are sort of aiming over top of its shoulder. We can fine tune the camera a tad bit more here. So maybe I'll make it, you know, 55 on the Z and make it, let's say, 5 on the Y. So it's a bit more over the shoulder. Now when we play... There we go. We are now aiming slightly to the left of the player. Of course, if we turn, the player's head might come through the crosshair a little here. But that's an issue we'll deal with in a future polishing video. Okay, so now we are able to aim and shoot. What we want to do now is go ahead and open up our player character again. Come back to our event graph and come back to our shooting logic. Now we don't have anything to shoot at the moment because we haven't created enemies yet, but we can still add some logic to check if we're hitting something. So on our line trace by channel, we have this return value that we can drag out from and we can add a branch. So basically, if this is false, we did not hit anything. If it is true, we hit something. Now to determine what that something is, we can drag out from this out hit and we can break hit result. Now this will give us a whole bunch of information, the location, the normal, the hit actor, the hit components, a whole bunch of stuff we need to know. But for now, what we want to do just to confirm we're hitting something is print the name of the actor we're hitting. So from true, we can search for print string and we'll just drag our hit actor into the in string, which will automatically call this get display name for us. Now, if we compile and save and we play, when we shoot, right in the top left, we can see what we're shooting. So you can see cube 3, cube 2, cube 1. Let's hit this ramp. Let's hit this other ramp, ramp 2. Let's hit the cylinder, cylinder 12. So that's going to do it for today's video. In the next video, we are going to be actually setting up enemies that the player can shoot and damage. So if you do want to see that, be sure to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if you run into any issues. Also, please do leave a comment if you have suggestions on how I can improve my videos going forward. I'm always looking for ways to improve these and make them better, so I really do appreciate any suggestions. With that said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and good luck with your games.